So good morning again. Uh, we will discuss uh, Carl Jung for this uh, for this session. So this theorist Carl Jung, he is one of the most misunderstood, or see maybe people just doesn't want to uh, are not interested in what Jung has to say. But uh, for me, <laughs> kasi nung undergrad kami, I think only a few of us really uh, like Jung. No? Uh, there are some who understood Jung, but they do not really like his uh, theory. Uh, mainly because, maybe it's because it's weird and, uh, and stuff. No? Uh, I think tung sa, sa ano namin, sa undergrad namin, dalawa lang kami. <laughs> dalawa lang kami nag, uh, talagang parang pinag-uusapan si Jung in a more <coughs> deep, in a deeper perspe perspective, but out. But, so, yeah. Because uh, he, he's, he is, wasn't one of the most misunderstood. Uh, I was disappointed nung undergrad ako since <coughs> hindi man siya masyadong tinuro. Yung parang dinaanan lang siya nung teacher namin. Hindi ko alam kung dahil ba, uh, kasi yung teacher namin, ano niya, uh, parang ano si Freud eh. uh, Very fanboy siya ni Freud. So baka mayroon din siyang bitter feelings kay Carl yung kaya hindi niya masyadong <laughs> diniscuss. But uh, thankfully nung nag-masters ako, uh, mas na, mas na discuss ng maayos si Yung since yung uh, professor ko during that time was uh, Yung yan siya talaga. No? Talagang uh, babad kay Yung. So parang mas uh, mas na appreciate ko yung ano, yung theory ni Yung when I took up master's degree. But yung undergrad binasa ko naman siya talaga ng AG and uh, magbasa ako ng maraming stuff about sa kanya. Because even before I took up uh, BS psychology, uh, I already have an idea about Yung. Kasi nag, I, 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 di ko lang na mention ko na sa inyo, but I was not uh, in psychology originally. I take up ako ng architecture and then uh, it didn't work out. Siguro kaya kong kaya kong tapusin pero hindi ko gustong tapusin. But uh, yun. And then I stopped for uh, one semester. And then nung nag-stop ako. Siyempre, I want to discover myself, no? Kasi nga, kaya gusto kong mag-shift, eh. Parang, ano ba talaga gusto ko sa buhay? Oh, I took, a, I, I look up in the internet and took a personality test and nagkataon yung pinakasikat na, yung na personality test sa uh, online is MBTI. So, kung alam niyo MBTI, INTP, INTJ, and whatnot. <coughs> I took up that test and lumabas is INTJ. <laughs> Although ngayon, minsan INTP, di ko alam. And I was uh, became curious with the test, and I I look it up, and then eventually I discovered that the test was based on Carl Jung's theory. Then I read Carl Jung, and then na yun. Buong araw ko siguro pinabasa yung Wikipedia page niya and uh, related pages, and then eventually I realized, oh, psychology is interesting, <laughs> and then yun nagshift ako ng uh, ng psychology. So if not for Jung, I think I will not be here talking about Jung <laughs> or talking about psychology in general. So I have uh, Carl Jung to thank for that. Okay, so that's my personal uh, experience with uh, discovering Carl Jung's theory. Okay, so kaya medyo naging fanboy niya ako eventually. <laughs> okay, so yan, yun yung ano ko kay Carl Jung. Um, yun yung experience ko sa kanya. Uh, so let's talk about a bit about Carl Jung. So Carl Jung his family tree is both re religious and most of them are doctors. Uh, mapapansin niyo sa buhay niya, maraming dualities, maraming opposing forces, kumbaga opposing uh, sides of the same coin, uh, yung, ano niya, yung, yung background niya as a whole. No? Religious sila at the same time doctors. No? Parang yung uh, religion and science. And then lived uh, only as... Uh, an only child for nine years before his sister was born since yung nauna sa kanya is namatay agad. And then yung, yung sister niya, eh, tapos na yung childhood niya nung, nung pinanganak siya. And then his father, according to him, is an idealist with strong doubts of his faith. And his mother has two sides, the realistic side and the mystical side. So mystical side, basically, not the rational side of uh, mother you know? realistic in terms of practicality in terms of caring uh, caring for the children no uh, yun. Uh, i think you can relate with this naman some uh, mothers are like that no? they have two sides they have the they have the very good in 
good in managing the house uh, side and the uh, side na parang mabibigla ano nangyari doon parang ganun so that's uh, that's how yung uh, see, saw his mother she has two sides and then he himself said that he has two sides he has two first personalities the personality one and personality two so as a personality one sabi niya extroverted siya with the external and objective uh, kumbaga focus yung personality one niya sa external and objective world uh, since nung bat kumbaga nagumpisa to nung mga adolescent niya hanggang or let's say childhood di ako sure uh, hanggang nung mga adult niya nagpeak nung adulthood niya and then eventually nung, uh, nung papunta na siya sa middle adulthood niya eh nag uh, biglang biglang mas naging dominating si personality too so si personality to more introverted and subjective world ang concern niya. So itong dalawang personality na to parang nag uh, ano sila may sarami kanya-kanya silang needs no as uh, as yung uh, live his life parang nag uh, struggle siya with between personality 1 and personality 2. And this uh, this may be one of the reasons why he he has an uh, unstable relationship with his wife. No? Siguro yung personality 1 niya love niya yung wife niya but the personality 2 is somehow not tame <laughs> no masyadong wild si personality two, or something like that uh, he was best friend with freud before no uh, although yung best friend i think it's it's an understatement uh, they when uh, before they met they are corresponding through letters wala pang chat no? wala pang email no? so literal na mga sulat ang way of communication with people that are not within your vicinity so they talked for 13 hours straight when they first met personally <laughs> best friends lang by <laughs> but i think it's more of an intellectual kind of relationship uh the relationship relates more parang couple sila but more like intellectual couples no? but still couple medyo, uh, medyo, ano, medyo weird yung relationship nila. he confessed that it was somehow a religious crush or something <laughs> <laughs> so really just crush niya doon ano yung panginoon niya si Freud <laughs> di ko alam so mga baka ganun no? he may once have worshipped Freud in his theories but eventually they broke up <laughs> uh, actually Freud believed that Jung will become his successor since may, uh, if you will see it later medyo parehas sila yun nga lang may expansion pack yung kay Jung uh, mas, ma, mas, mas maraming details yung kay Jung he will become, sabi ni Freud, you will become my crown prince, no? crown prince ng psychoanalysis. And uh, too much expectations, of course, can lead to a major disappointment. And that's exactly what happened with their relationship. They broke up and some biographers think that Jung's previous experience of sexual assault by a man he once worshipped may have contribution to this breakup. So, <laughs> merong, merong, ano, merong, merong, merong siya naging experience. So, Kaya siguro nagkaroon ng ganong breakup with Freud. Kumbaga, it is inevitable. It will happen. So, yun. Ang weird, no? <laughs> and then he has uh, his mother complex. Yun nga, yung parang yung kanyang uh, two sides of seeing his mother. May have affected his relationship with his wife, Emma. Emma Jung, which, which, is, uh, which uh, is also an uh, analytical psychologist during that time. Uh, started an external marital affair with Tony Wolf. So not only Tony Wolf, actually, marami siyang mga naging ka-affair. Meron pa nga siya naging ka-affair na client niya. Uh, if you have watched A Dangerous Method, it's a film about Freud and Jung, no? their relationship and their theories and how they broke up. So yun, panoorin niyo yun, The Dangerous Method, it's good. Although, huwag niyo pa panoorin yun pag... Uh, Kasama niya yung mga magulang niya because it's not, it's not PG-13. <laughs> okay, so that's a, that's a basic of Carl Jung. Uh, we haven't touched childhood, yung childhood ni Jung. <laughs> and dami niyang weird experiences ng childhood siya, like having a totem. Uh, or and I, I'm not sure if he had that totem or he sculpted that totem. And then eventually, nung tumanda siya, na-discover niya na that totem was somehow similar to the totem that is being worshipped by other tribes. No? And that lead, led him to, kumbaga, it's, di ko, it led him to have a theory, kumbaga, it led him to have an idea that maybe people have a common unconscious or common experiences that is, uh, that is present in their unconscious that may have contributed to that, to that, ano, to that experience.
So yun. Pero yung hindi na natin na-inhin yun, it's uh, too deep na. After all, we're just more on the basics of Carl Jung. I think if gagawa ng course, pwedeng gumawa ng isang buong course kay Carl Jung. <laughs> isang buong subject, buong sem, yun lang yung pag-uusapan. How I wish, no? <laughs> Alam ko may in-offer dati na ganun sa isang school, eh. Uh, and then yung theory niya, uh, if you can, if you will notice, uh, the theme of duality is present in his life. And therefore, that theme of duality was also carried over sa kanyang theory, which he called analytical psychology. Parang derivative ng psychoanalysis, no? Hindi <laughs> ko alam kung sa Java yan or what. But, yun nga. So, the basic oh, basic premise or basic uh, uh, basic basic uh, explanation or basic uh, line of theory ng analytical psychology is like this, no? Jung believe that each of us is motivated not only by repressed experiences but also by certain emotionally toned experiences inherited from our ancestors. So it's not only our personal repressed unconscious or personal repressed experiences, but also experiences inherited from our ancestors pa. So namana na, namana na experience. So these inherited images make up what Jung called the collective unconscious. The collective unconscious includes those elements that we have never experienced individually, but which have come down to us from our ancestors. So basically, yung sinasabi niya, yung mga naranasan ng mga ancestors natin is buried deep within us. It is there. And uh, some people, uh, or most people I know, are, are weird, weirded out in this, uh, in this theory of Jung. I remember back then na parang yung teacher, hindi ko alam kung nakalimutan ko lang siya yung teacher, but sabi niya parang ang ano daw, ang, ang weird daw. But uh, ang weird na uh, bakit daw mapapasa yung memories ng mga ancestors natin. But I did not find it weird. Why? Because uh, other animals have that kind of experience. no? For example, turtles. Uh, the moment turtles are born or hatched, because they have eggs pala, the moment they, were, they are hatched, they know what will what we uh, what they will do. They will follow the moonlight and then go to the ocean. Why do they know that? Someone did someone taught them to do that? Minuturo ba sa kanila na? Uy, pagka pagka panganak niyo, pagka labas niyo sa egg niyo, labas na kayo, no? <laughs> Punta kayo dun sa sa ocean. Meron ba nagturo? Wala. It's uh, inherited. It's an inherited experience. It has in, uh, may inherited experience sila na once they saw the moon or the moonlight they will go there. They will go to the ocean. They will follow that line. So, uh, it's not far-fetched. It's, it's not really weird. Evolutionarily speaking, we have those kinds of uh, what, we, what, usually, what people usually call instincts. And that instinct is something that is not taught to us. It's not something that we experienced before. It's just there. No? So, collective unconscious is a collection of those instincts. Uh, but with, in our case, it's not necessarily instinct because instinct is just you want to do that. You're compelled to do that. A collective unconscious, on the other hand, they are parang experiences, blueprints of, of experiences on how we will do this and that. <clears throat> uh, so, yun yung, yun yung concept niya of collective unconscious. It's, it, it, it's in line with the evolutionary uh, theory. Uh, meron, kumbaga hindi naman siya ganun ka completely far-fetched as others. Uh, kasi yung iba parang yun yung, yun yung comment nila kay Jung. Eh. Masyado siyang ano, masyado siyang mystical, masyado siyang occult, masyado siyang, masyado siyang magical mag -isa. But it's not, if you will look at it in, in, on that perspective, it's not really far-fetched that we can inherit uh, certain experiences from our ancestors. Lalo na, if that experiences, if those kinds of experiences are really in, hi, highly impactful in our life. Not only impactful, but also help us survive during those times uh, na hindi pa civilized yung mundo. <clears throat> so it's not that far-fetched. No? Yeah, lumilitaw na yung pagka-fanboy ko. No? Pinagkatanggol ko na siya, wala pa man. <laughs> but uh, that's, uh, that's how it is. So yung mga experiences na yan, it really influences us. Okay, so that's the core of uh, analytical psychology. But before we go to the core, of course, we must go to the ano muna, to the surface level. No? Another thing siguro na nagiging issue with the teaching about, uh, when, when teaching about Jung is that some, uh, yung mga naging, ano ko, naging experiences ko is nung undergrad, eh, inuuna talaga nila yung unconscious ni Jung. 
eh, bakit agad ka pupunta sa unconscious? Kung, kung baga parang agad-agad sa, sa baba ka, ba di ka muna sa surface? No? So, this time, I, I, even yung book ninyo, sa book ninyo, direct agad sa personal unconscious tsaka collective unconscious, if you will see. But, tapos saka na lang yung mga iba sa conscious. Pero in our case, I, we, will, uh, we will do it step by step. We will go to, from the conscious, papunta sa core, which is the collective unconscious. <coughs> so, yun. So, we have levels of psyche din with uh, Carl Jung. Same with uh, Freud, merong conscious and unconscious. But unlike K. Freud, merong personal unconscious and collective unconscious. Uh, almost the same lang, especially the cons conscious and personal unconscious. Nagkakaiba lang talaga sa collective unconscious. So, unahin natin si conscious. So, conscious or the conscious part of our personality, according to Jung, is the conscious images uh, are those that are sensed by the ego, whereas unconscious elements have no relationship with the ego. Another, uh, another contrast na naman. Kasi kay, uh, Adler, ay, kay Freud, if you remember, ang ego daw is partly nas unconscious. With, uh, with Jung, no, ego is not conscious. It's not in the unconscious. It's the center of consciousness. Uh, but according kay Jung, ego is not the center or it's not the core of personality. Unlike kay Freud na parang minensure niya or parang ini-emphasize niya that the ego or the ego is the main driver of the personality, di ba? Uh, and uh, kumbaga, ang trabaho ng ego is pagbigyan si id and super ego. So, in Jung's case, there's no such thing. Walang super ego, walang id. Uh, it's more, uh, parang galang ganun. Yung sa kanya is collective unconscious. So ego, yan nga, it's not the core of the personality because the ego is not whole personality but must be completed by more comprehensive self, the center of personality that is largely unconscious. So according to yung, yung mga personality or yung personality ng isang tao is not necessarily uh, nasa ego lang. And para makumpleto yung personality ng tao, kailangan niyang mag-merge sa mga ibang mga elements na nasa unconscious ng isang tao. And that unconscious has two layers, personal and collective. So, yun nga, healthy individuals are in contact with their conscious world, but they also allow themselves to experience their unconscious self, thus to achieve individuation. A concept we will discuss next week. By the way, this... Uh, this uh, <laughs> We will talk about Carl Jung in three meetings. No? First meeting, and this meeting will be conscious. The next meeting will be personal and conscious. And the third meeting will be the collective and conscious. <laughs> okay? So, three, siya yung pinakamahaba natin pinag-aaralan. Wala kang magagawa kasi bias ako kay Jung. <laughs> anyway, so yun. So, attitudes. Uh, before we talk about that. So, yung conscious, it's the, it's the path. Uh, or it's the waypoint from the external world papunta sa ating internal world. So therefore, conscious, uh, the, our consciousness or our ego must, uh, must have some, kubaga, must have some communication, must have some connection with the external world. And usually the external world is full of information and that information must go through the conscious part. So, ano yung magpa-process? Ano yung mag uh, ano yung magpa-process doon sa information? Ayun, ang magpa-process sa information na yun is yung mga tinatawag nating attitudes tsaka functions. So, this is the this is the this attitudes and functions make mix up the personality types ng mga tao. So, kumbaga paano yung way of thinking nila and way of behaving nila. Actually, more on way of thinking lang to since behavior is something that is not uh, emphasize in uh, in this uh, in this regard. So attitudes, uh, the consciousness has attitudes and function uh, as a means of communicating with the external world. So first is attitudes. So the attitude is a predisposition to act or react in a characteristic direction. In particular, the psychic energy na tinatawag ni Carl Jung. No? Psychic energy also known as libido. But it's different with the libido of Freud. <coughs> Uh, yung libido ni Freud is more of a sexual energy. Ang libido naman ni Jung is more of a psychic, general psychic energy siya. So, yun, medyo weird. Pero basta, maano nyo din yan. <laughs> so, there are two kinds of attitudes. <clears throat> we, have, we have two ways of, uh, two ways, two ways of directing our consciousness. 
Uh, first is introversion, the turning inward of psychic energy with an orientation toward the subjective. So introverts are tuned in their inner world with all its biases, fantasies, dreams, and individualized perception. And then there is the extroversion or the attitude distinguished by the turning outward of psychic energy so that a person is oriented toward the objective and away from the subjective. So meron daw tayong dalawang way in uh, using our psychic energy. It's either papunta sa loob or papunta sa labas. So, ang introversion or yung mga introverts, usually ang psychic energy nila is papunta sa loob. They, uh, they, they, uh, they see the information and then once they see the information, they take it in. And then yung taking, in, taking it in is more of a, nagkakaroon ng subjective colors yung mga information na yun. Nagka, uh, uh, kumbaga, the way they approach it, it's more on a subjective manner. They do not really care if how the how is it how does the information looks outside they only care uh, how they interpret that information in their own world meanwhile yung mga extroverts naman they they tend to see or they tend to uh, to see the <clears throat> they tend to see the outside world more kumpara mas tinitingnan nila kung ano nasa labas kaysa kung ano yung ano nasa loob nila so it's outward outward yung energy Okay, so if you can see, this is uh, the, this definition is very different with how we use introversion and extroversion nowadays, because uh, introversion and extroversion in our daily conversation means yeah how we how we usually respond to other people. No, so introverted people tend to avoid many people or many humans around. Uh, they tend to be alone. Meanwhile, extroverts are very people oriented. Uh, actually, nauna yung kay Jung. <laughs> no? Nauna tong definition na to. Hiniram actually nung mga tritiri yung, 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 ano ni Jung, yung naming ni Jung. Kasi basically, they're the same. Eh. Uh, introvert, introverted people, since they, they use their psychic energy inward, they tend to absorb everything and then interpret it. So, dahil they tend to absorb everything, they need to choose what to absorb. Kasi hindi mo naman pwedeng ma-absorb ma lahat. So may limitations yung psychic energy natin, yung, yung brain natin, kumbaga. So they tend to choose people that they need, kumbaga, they tend to choose people more uh, more carefully than extroverts since they do not want to waste energy. Kasi nga, puro sila na, nasa inner world sila lagi. <laughs> Extroversion, on the other hand, they gain energy by by being with people because being with people they can kumbaga they they can uh na, na release nila yung energy nila na uh, palabas lagi no hindi kumbaga mas na mas nagagamit nila yung psychic energy nila pag palabas nila ginagamit so mas ang mataas mas mataas ang tendency na mag-seek sila ng other people or mag-seek sila ng mga extreme experiences kasi nga yun yung yun yung flow ng energy nila okay so uh, almost the same naman, although different in conception. Okay? So yung mga trait kasi more on behavior sa mga yan. Eh. Yung kay, yung kay uh, yung attitudes more on how we, how we orient ourselves with the external world. No? So yeah, that's, uh, those are attitudes. Uh, do you have any questions or clarifications regarding attitude? Okay, so next. So attitudes uh, actually it's not really exclusive no big sabihin hindi naman ibig sabihin na introverted ka eh wala ka ng side of extroversion uh, according kay yung neither uh, people are neither introverted or extroverted <clears throat> walang complete introvert walang complete extrovert uh, we have those kinds of at we have those two attitudes yun nga lang at some points meron tayong we tend to go one direction or the other uh, he has this theory that uh, as we grow old, we become more introverted. No? Uh, parang pagka bata daw tayo, we're more externally motivated or extroverted tayo. But as we grow old, naging introverted tayo. Maybe because ganun yung buhay niya, nung bata siya, extroverted siya. Pero Pan paano naman yung mga batang introvert? No? Ay, yung pagkata, ay, sa bagay, siguro yung mga batang introvert, as they grow old, they become extroverted. No? 
kasi ganun yung nangyari sa akin nung bata ko, introverted ako. And then eventually, abang uh, tumatanda ko yung extroversion ko yung mataas. But anyway, uh, we have, uh, at some points in our lives, we tend to become introverted and extroverted. And there are some, there are some parts of our lives that we may be introverted but sometimes Hmm? introverted sometimes introverted <laughs> extroverted yan uh, we have those uh, those uh, those parts of our lives na meron tayong attitude na iba sa general attitude natin sa buhay ngayon nga sa akin dun sa example ko dun sa youtube video i'm i'm more of an introvert uh, personally but uh, as you can see in public speaking i'm i'm quite talkative no and i can sense people uh Although nowadays, since it's online, I cannot see people, I cannot see your reaction. Hindi ko alam kung tumatama ba yung mga jokes ko sa inyo <laughs> na nire-recycle ko every class. And actually, this joke was recycled in the class a while ago. Uh, I, I, I cannot feel it. But at least uh, when I'm speaking in public, I'm very extroverted. To the point na some people mistake me as an, as a, an, ex, as an extrovert. Actually, yung personal personality types, attitudes, and functions, nag, nag-umpisa to as a, as a way to integrate theory of Freud and Adler. But eventually, hindi siya naging, hindi naging ganun yung end niya. Uh, so, ang ginawa ni Freud, ininterpret niya, or tinignan niya yung buhay ni Adler tsaka ni Freud in relation to their theory. Parang tapos doon niya na-discover na parang may, may, parang may discrepancy. Parang sabi niya, si Freud, personally, he is introverted as he is focused on his uh, own subjective life, his fan fantasies and all. But his theory seems to be uh, extroverted. Same with the Adler. Si Adler, very extroverted naman siya personally. Marami siyang kakilala, marami siyang, marami siyang, uh, marami siyang friends. So, parang ano siya, uh, people-oriented siya. But their theory is quite opposite of their personal personality or your personal orientation nila. Because Freud, ang theory niya is all about external world, no? how we release our sex and aggression in the external world. But with Adler, despite his extroverted uh, attitude, eh, yung theory niya is very subjective, very introverted, subjective perception niya. So parang dun naisip ni Jung na parang, Hmm. So, hindi naman tayo talaga, kumbaga, we have some parts in ourselves that are extroverted and introverted. So, yun yung, yun yung naging conclusion niya. Meanwhile, yung kay Jung, uh, I think it's, a, it's in the middle. Middle siya, pero kung titignan mo, parang, parang ano din siya eh, parang more introverted yung theory niya. Kasi you're digging deep sa self mo, papunta sa uh, un- collect- collective unconscious. But di ko alam. Siguro after the end of the lesson, I will ask you, what is Jung's theory? Is it introverted or extroverted? So be ready with that. <laughs> okay, next. So yung mga attitudes na to, they, they modify the functions. No? So if attitude is the orientation or the direction uh, of how we, per, uh, how we deal with information, the next is yung mga function naman is how we see and how we judge the information. So functions of the psyche is an apparatus for adaptation and orientation and consists of number different psychic functions. Both introversion and extroversion can combine with one or more of functions, forming eight possible orientations or types. So basically, functions is how we perceive information, how we see information, paano natin nakikita yung information sa external world, and judging or, and of course, function also uh, uses that information to judge whether that information is good for us or bad for us. So, kaya nga naka-divide naka, naka sa dalawa yung functions. So, uh, first, uh, the first part is the perception or the non-rational functions. And then the second two would be judging and rational functions. So, so judging, uh, as a perceiving, it's how we perceive, how we see, how we hear. And then judging naman is how we uh, how we evaluate if, if that information is good or bad. Okay? So, unahin natin sa perception kasi yun naman yun nang una in terms of uh, uh, in terms of dealing with the external world, we have to see first the information. So, sa perception, there are two ways or two functions. Uh, first is sensing and intuiting. 
Uh, by the way, these functions are present within us. So, ibig, sabi ibig sabihin, lahat tayo may sensing, may intuiting, may thinking, and may feeling. Yun nga lang nag-prefer tayo ng isa or dalawa. Eventually, mamaya di-discuss ko yan. So, pag-usapan muna natin, ano yung mga perceptions? So, first on the perception function would be sensing. So, sensing the function that receives uh, physical stimuli and transmit them to perceptual consciousness. Uh, perce per perception. <laughs> perception by means of five senses. So, uh, sensing is how we see the world using our five senses. Uh, for example, there's an apple in front of you. So you see that apple. You see via eyes. If you tasted it, you tasted it via your tongue. Uh, if, you, <clears throat> if you touched it, tactile uh, senses. No? So if you see an apple, that's an, ap uh, that's an apple. Its color, its color is red. It is uh, crispy. Uh, it's sweet. So that's sensing. Okay, so there are two kinds of, uh, there are two modes of sensing. It's depende kung anong attitude mo. Uh, it can be an extroverted sensing. People perceive external stimuli objectively in much the same way that this stimuli exists in reality. So yun nga, as I've mentioned, if you see an apple, you say that the, the apple is red. The apple is, uh, the apple is, uh, taste, uh, the, the apple is red, the apple is sweet, the apple is, uh, Big, the apple is round. So that's extroverted sensing. Now, introverted sensing naman, people are largely influenced by their subjective sensations of sight, sound, taste, touch, smell, and so forth. So they're guided by their interpretation of sense stimuli rather than the stimuli themselves. So yung mga introverts naman, they have, the all introverted sensing, they have an interpretation with what they see. For example, uh, let's go back to the apple. Uh, an introverted sensing person will say, uh, this apple tastes good. Parang uh, meron siyang agad interpretation dun sa nasa sense niya. Okay? So, it is not really the stimuli themselves, but his or her own uh, subjective interpretation of that sight, of that smell, of that taste. Yun yung ano ng mga sensing, introverted sensing. See? So, ped, yung, siguro yung iba sa inyo, wala dito. They do not really, they are not uh, more on extroverted sensing or introverted sensing. Ba, pero yung mga iba, baka. No? So, yung mga extroverted sensing people, ang bagay na mga trabaho sa kanila would be proofreader because they can see and they, kumbaga, mas, mas objective sila in seeing things. No? House painter, wine tester, tester, taster, or any other job demanding sensory discrimination congruent with those uh, of most people. So, yung mga ito sila yung parang mga objective kinds of uh, objective kinds of sensing na mga tao. And then introverted sensing naman, they are the interpretative people. They always tend to interpret the thing around them. For example, portrait artist, especially yung mga personalized, no? For example, yung mga gawa ni Pablo Picasso, yung cubism. No? Hindi naman ganun yung mukha ng mga tao. Hindi naman cube yung mukha ng tao. Pero the way he paints it, it's more on cube form. That's his uh, internal interpretation of the thing that he, he or she is seeing. No? Uh, that is introverted sensing. Okay? So clear ba kung ano yung sensing? Okay. So parang clear naman. Next would be intuiting. Or intuition. So intuiting involves perception beyond the workings of consciousness. So intuiting differs from sensing in that it is more creative, often adding or subtracting elements from conscious sensation. So therefore, it's more unconscious. So if sensing is seeing the information through the senses, uh, intuition naman is uh, perceiving the information through your unconscious. <laughs> Ang weird, di ba? Parang nandun nga sa harap mo yung apple eh. Bakit ano pa yung iisipin mo? <laughs> uh, another example would be how how clinicians uh, how clinicians diagnose other clinicians, especially my experience na clinician. They will just look at the look at the patient, look at the client, and they will instantly know ano yung possible na diagnosis sa client na yan. Without even, without even checking every nooks and crannies of the symptom. That's intuition. 
Another another example of intuition would be the one that is used by the females. Yung mga babae, like mothers and girlfriends. They know if there's something wrong without even knowing everything around it. Alam nila pag may, may ginagawang kalabas tagon yung mga anak nila. Alam din nila if may something wrong sa mga anak nila, yung mga mothers. And it's the same with the with girlfriends or wives. No, They know there's something's wrong. Huh? No? Pero wala silang, kumbaga, hindi naman sa wala silang evidence, pero it's more than what their the eyes can see. Kumbaga, <laughs> parang sa little prince lang. Nakalimutan ko yung line na yan. Uh, something that is essential is more than meets the eye or something like that. <clears throat> so that's intuition. You do not necessarily depend on what your senses give you. You are also depending on your what your unconscious is telling you. That's intuition. Because uh, intuition is something that is uh, parang na-crystallized na information eh, or crystallized experience na yan na hindi mo ma-explain. And then you just know. Okay? So clear ba kung ano ang, ang tricky kasi yan ng intuition eh? Lalo na sa taong hindi naniniwala sa intuition. <laughs> Yun, what is essential is invisible to the eye. So in that, in that, uh, in that uh, line, that's, that's intuition. Because invisible to the eye, invisible to the senses. And usually that's true. What is essential is not seen, but felt. No? Uh, you just know it. Yan. So, talagang well-read ka, no? <laughs> Nakalimutan ko na yung high school pa kasi ako nung binasa ko yan. So, yun. Uh, it's more, uh, it's intuition. More like, more, uh, it's in inexplicable. Okay? So, usually females, again, have this kind. So, uh, they have this, affin they have an affinity to intuition. Males, on the other hand, we're more of a sensing uh, sensing people uh, what I'm saying is yun nga, people or males tend to be sensing and females tend to be intuitive that's not to say naman that uh, either or is good or bad no it's bad to become senseful or it's bad to become intuition may mga dark side yan kasi if you're too much uh, intuitive baka masyadong intuition naman yung laging ginagamit eh, baka hindi mo na makita yung what's, what's, what's in front of you if naman sensing lagi ang ginagamit, five senses lang, eh baka hindi mo makita yung mga something na hindi dapat, di naman kayang makita ng senses. So, it's better to have, uh, to have, uh, to master those two. I myself is not, I'm struggling in following my intuition. Siguro ito yung reason kung bakit lag, mabilis akong maligaw. <laughs> Kasi yung mga, yung mga taong magaling sa direction, they just know eh. You, they just know how, they have the intuition to, to follow but people who see things through their eyes lang like me <laughs> i tend to get lost mabuti na lang may gps <laughs> so yun uh there again it can be modified by extroversion or introversion extroverted intuitive these people are oriented towards facts in the external world like inventors so among um, inventors usually nagkakaroon sila ng eureka moment so, magtitignan nila yung mga in front of them, yung mga gadgets na ginagawa nila and all. Uh, uh, kung senses lang ang gagamitin nila, kung sight lang, parang it doesn't make sense. But sometimes, uh, at one point of their study, they will just uh, get a moment, galing sa unconscious na itong gawin mo and then they will just do it and then they will discover something. So, that's intuition. Uh, extroverted intuition. You're using the external world to have an intuition about it. Introverted intuition, on the other hand, are uh, more on naka subjective sila, like mystics, prophets, no? uh, surrealistic artists. Yung, alam yung mga surrealistic artists, yung mga nagpe-paint ng mga dream-like paintings. So the, those are surrealistic uh, paintings. No? Yung mga, kunyari, may baliena sa... Kung napanood nyo na yung, ano, yung music video ng Up and Up, napanood nyo na ba yun? Called play. Yun, surrealistic ano yun, uh, style. <coughs> May balyena sa himpapawid na gabi. Parang ganun. Yung mga ganong scenery. Or religious fanatics are often people peculiar. Uh, they have this intuition that they know that they are right. But they, it's not oriented toward the external world. They just know they have, they have the conviction that everything they do or say is something that is true or something that is right. 
Okay? So, introvert, introverted intuition yung mga ganun. So, gets ba? Uh, are there any questions about this? Next, uh, next would be papunta na tayo dito sa judging uh, function or na, uh, rational function. You know? So, so judging, uh, if the perceiving is how we see or how we inter uh, how we interact with the information, uh, uh, yung mga judging naman or yung mga rational rational functions naman is how we process the information. Kasi di ba may information dyan? Eh, useless ang information kung hindi mo ipoprocess ang information. So in processing information, we have two functions there. So the first function would be thinking. So thinking or people who are in tune with their, with their function, thinking function, uh, they, judge, they judge something, they judge the information via logical process. Uh, judging, it's uh, deciding if that information is good or bad for you or for other people. So thinking, it's uh, uh, thinking logically if the information is good or bad for you. So going back to example ng apple, uh, you saw the apple, it's red, bright red. You tasted the apple, it's sweet. And then you smelled the apple, it smells good. And then, yun. So therefore, this apple is very Taste, uh, this apple is very good. This apple is ripe. Based on the chain of ideas, chain uh, logical uh, logical flow of idea, that this apple is good. So that's how thinking uh, thinking function works. Okay, for example, you you saw something. Uh, you saw a person, a male, courting you. Uh, thinking people who are more attuned to their thinking function will see. Or we'll judge that, we'll judge if a person is good or bad for them via thinking, via pra practical methods. Kaya ba nitong, kaya ba nitong taong tong buhayin ako? Kaya niya ba kung, uh, kaya niya bang, kaya niya bang ma-maintain yung, uh, yung klase ng relationship na ganito? So that is the thinking function. No, may logical. No? Uh, for example, yun nga, may naliligaw sa'yo, sasagutin mo ba o hindi? So if yung process is, uh, Yun nga, can this person provide me? Uh, mas bata ba to sa akin? Mas matanda ba to sa akin? Mas prefer ko mas matanda sa akin para mas maraming, uh, mas maraming experience, mas maraming uh, potential for income or something like that. So that is thinking. Okay? So there are two kinds of thinking, uh, extroverted thinking and introverted thinking. So extroverted thinking, people rely heavily on concrete thoughts, but they may also use abstract ideas if these ideas have been transmitted to them from without, uh, from example, uh, parents or teachers. So extroverted thinking, they they heavily think about anything in the outside world. So for example, all the mathematicians can be also can also be introverted thinkers. Eh? Lalo na yung pure mathematics na walang pakialam sa real world. <laughs> Ito mga ganun, no? But uh, usually, mathematicians and accountants and engineers, they're they are very concerned. They're very, they're thinking outside, no? For example, engineers, they think about the structural integrity of something in the external world, <laughs> no? The structural integrity of a building, the structural integrity of a bridge, of a of uh, software, yung mga software engineers, and accountants, of course, pera yung mga yan, no? They can, they, they externally think. Meanwhile, introverted thinking naman, they are more uh, on the introverted side, uh, subjective side sila. Like, for example, kung mga engineers tinitignan nila ang in in integrity ng mga buildings tsaka ng mga bridges, ang mga philosophers, tinitignan nila integrity ng mga, uh, ng mga arguments, ng mga concepts, tsaka ng mga logical flow ng mga uh, arguments. No? So, introverted thinking siya. It's not about the external world, but about the internal world of a person. Inventors are also introverted thinkers at some points. <coughs> uh, and, and to some extent, psychologists din. They are introverted thinking. No? Kasi we're, our topic is basically subjective perceptions of people, <laughs> subjective uh, behaviors nila. No? Although depende, siguro yung mga clinicians more on more introverted thinking, but yung mga nasa HR, yung mga nasa organizational, they're more on the extroverted thinking. So means we sometimes row on two rivers at the same time. <laughs> okay? So extroverted thinking or introverted thinking. Okay, so next would be 
feeling. So if thinking has a logical step-by-step -step process, feeling do, does not have that. It's more fluid than thinking. Uh, feeling is the evaluation of every conscious activity, even those value that's indifferent. So this is not an emotion, but may involve some. No? Uh, for example, yun nga, uh, <coughs> iyong may nandiligaw sa'yo. Sino sasagutin mo? Uh, yung pag yung way of process uh, way of processing mo in that uh, in that regard is that you just know or you just feel or hindi naman feel eh. intuition na kasi yun eh. uh, feeling is more like parang uh, this guy is right for me because I I, I know uh, parang feeling feeling ko tama tama yung ano ko tama yung decision ko parang ganun. It's hard to explain because I'm a person who is not that I'm not the feeling person, I'm a thinking person. So I, I I'm having a hard time explaining how feeling works in judging or because basically I do not believe in feeling <laughs> in judging a per, in judging the information. I have to do it step by step logically. But yun nga. But if you do not do logical thinking or logical step by step procedure in this in uh, deciding if information is good or bad, then you are in tune on your feeling. No? So there, kubaga you you just know how to do stuff without even considering the logical logical steps. Okay. So for example, you extroverted feeling people, uh, these, these people use objective data to make evaluations like business people or politicians. So politicians, they know, they know what to do, uh, it, even though it's not logical. For example, business people, they, they, know, uh, they know if a person can be trustworthy or not. And then politicians, they know when to say things, how to say things, and where to say things so that they can gain the votes of other people. It's not necessarily logical. Kumaga, di naman nila, ah, yung mga taong to, nakatingin sila sa baba, so baka feeling hindi nila sila nakikinig sa akin or something. Walang ganun. Instant lahat, parang feeling lang, alam nila, alam nilang i-feel yung surroundings nila. And they will act according to it. So that's, uh, that's how extroverted feeling works. And now with the introverted feeling naman, people base their value judgment primarily on subjective perception rather than objective facts. Like critics of various art forms make such introverted feeling, making value judgment on the basis of the objective individualized data. If you're on the YouTube, uh, ako kasi sa YouTube ako. <laughs> Di ako nagti-TV, so sa YouTube yung form of entertainment ko. Uh, I'm fond of people who are reviewing films, reviewing, uh, uh, reviewing uh, animes. No, um, actually, before I before I watch a film or before I watch an anime, I will first look for their. No, I say Chris Tuckman, kilala niyo pala yan. <laughs> uh, I usually look, look for reviews muna because I don't want to waste my time if the if the film is not good. So I will look for her, look for a review. So. Uh, those people who do such reviews have introverted feeling in saying if a, if that uh, is good or bad. No, uh, for example, there are some people that uh, they have the introverted. They just know that this film is good because, uh, <coughs> parang uh, they have the subjective uh, idea of how a film should look like or how a film should be made or how a story should be structured uh there's no such thing as a, a standard for that but they have their own interpretations no? so they use introverted feeling there no? kung ano ba yung interpretation nila dun sa nakita nilang film or nakita nilang uh nakita nilang something at wala silang pakilam sa sasabihin ng ibang tao regarding sa opinions nila they just want to say their opinions Okay, so extroverted feeling kasi on the other hand, you're, you're more on, in tune with the external people. So parang mas inaano mo yung external world. Mas, ina, mas inaano mo yung, mas priority may external world. So introverted naman, parang this is my opinion. This is how I interpret this film and this is good. No? So they ignore traditional opinions and beliefs and they're nearly complete indifference to objective world. Often causes persons around them to feel uncomfortable and cool their attitude towards them. So, ganun yung introverted feeling. So, introverted, more on subjective perception in processing. 
or subjective uh, subjective biases in processing uh, the information of the outside world. Okay, so yun. <clears throat> uh, same with introversion and extroversion. Uh, we have those functions. We, 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 tend, we have the tendency to think, we have the tendency to feel, we have the tendency to sense, we have the tendency to intuit it, to, intu, I mean, to intuit, <laughs> to, to use intuition. So, yun. But uh, out of four functions, do these four functions that we have, as again, I mentioned, we all have that four functions, uh, it usually appears in a hierarchy with one occupying a superior position, another a secondary position, and other two inferior positions. So we usually have uh, four functions talaga uh, na ginagamit, but there's uh, occupy, kumbaga may hierarchy, kung ano yung priority, kung ano yung mas tendency natin. So we usually use our dominant function, yung superior position. So if I will ask you now, ano yung sa apat na to, saan kayo mas naglilin? No? For example, ako, mas naglilin ako sa sensing. Although minsan intuiting din. Hindi, sensing ako. Feeling ko mas sensing ako. Feeling ko mas sensing ako. <laughs> so mas sensing ako. Uh, I usually depend on what I, what I see, what I hear, no? and I'm thinking. <laughs> so more on thinking side ako. But uh, out of those two, sensing and thinking, I think mas introverted thinking ako, introverted thinker ako. So I think this is my dominant function. But at the same time, as, I, as I've mentioned, there is also a part of me that is extroverted in sensing. I can extra, kumbaga, mag, magaling ako mag-edit, magaling ako mag, uh, I mean, I like editing, I like being, uh, I like, uh, I like correcting stuff. So, I, I have extroverted sensing. And also in, uh, 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 magaling ako sa clerical work. Alam niyo clerical work. No? So, maano ako sa extroverted sensing. So, I think that is my, another superior, uh, or secondary position ko yun. And then the other two inferior positions. No? So, but we have a dominant function. I think in, in my case, my dominant function is thinking, introverted thinking. So, but some develop two, <laughs> some develop three dominant functions. But the most ideal, uh, I mean, the most ideal thing to develop is you develop all of them. You develop four functions. Okay? So that's very hard. <laughs> No? Why do we have to develop those all of four of them? Di ba pwedeng isang function na lang? Bakit kailangan lahat? Talagay nyo bakit? But yeah, basically what's, uh, what, uh, <coughs> what your classmate said is true. We have, we have to develop those four functions because the context, kumbaga yung context talaga is important. Because may kanya-kanyang strengths and weaknesses yung mga functions na yan. So, for example, in my case, my dominant function is introverted thinking. Introverted thinking is very, very good in uh, abstract ideas, no? especially in forming logical arguments. I'm, di naman ako best doon, but I'm quite, quite good at it. <laughs> no? uh, so, kumbaga... It has advantages. Yun yung advantages niya is I'm good in logical arguments. I'm also good in, good in planning since in, I use abstract. I can I can visualize no uh, what I will do, but it has some limitations, particularly in relationships because introverted thinking does not work in relationships because relationships are not logical. Uh, <clears throat> it's uh, it's more of a feeling, kasi no? you need to be in touch with your feeling feeling function in order for you to have a smooth relationship because uh, if if we will think about it in a logical perspective we will not get along with other people because we are different with other people my way of doing things is very different from the way of other people are doing in their thing uh, so if i'm too dependent on my dominant function the tendency would be uh, magkakaroon ako ng unhealthy personality but if I somehow manage to develop at least another dominant function, in an, or ideally all of them, uh, mas magiging well-rounded ako as a person. I can adjust my personality depending on the situation, depending on where I am, depending on who I'm talking with, 
So, mas nagiging healthy yung personality ko. Mas nagiging psychologically healthy ako during that time. No? But again, it's very hard to do this. No? It's hard. Parang ang, ang hirap maging thinking and feeling at the same time. And ang hirap i-determine kung kailan mo dapat gagamitin ng thinking mo and feeling mo. Uh, same with feeling, uh, feeling-oriented people. Feeling-oriented people, ang main advantage nila would be sa relationships. They're very good in relationships. Not only that, they can be more in tune with their emotions. Yun yung limitation ng mga thinking people. Eh. Uh, we, uh, I, we, do, we do not really... We are not in tune with our emotions, so therefore we cannot label our emotions. When we cannot label our emotions, we cannot feel them extensively. But on the other hand, feeling people, yung mga nasa feeling people, they, are, they tend to feel their emotions on a higher level. They can instantly, they can instantly label what they are feeling. <laughs> Kasi in my case, I cannot, sometimes I do not know when I'm sad. No? Mali, yung mga tao lang na makikilala talaga sa akin yung talaga mapakapansin na I'm feeling sad on that particular day. But I myself, I do not feel sad. <laughs> But I'm sad. But kasi I'm, 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 I have this tendency to think about my emotions. Diba? Parang ang weird, no? Thinking about emotions. <laughs> do I feel sad? Why do I feel sad? Is there something to be sad about? <laughs> If I do not find a reason to be sad, to be sad about... Uh, why would I feel sad? Hindi na ako magiging sad nun. So, that's thinking. But it's not healthy to do that. No? <laughs> it's not healthy to do that because you, emotions uh, demands to be felt. Pain demands to be felt. Uh, John Green yata yun. Although hindi ko binasa yung book niya. Nakita na, narinig ko lang. Hindi ko gusto yung mga book ni John Green. Although gusto ko si John Green. Uh, it's something that is a sort of limitation. Feeling people, on the other hand, they do not have that limitation. No? As I sometimes uh, envy those people. But there's a one disadvantage sa mga feeling side. They can be, more, they can be impulsive in their decision-making. Uh, unlike thinking people, they can be scheduled. Kung baga may plan, pag may plan o mga thinking people, they will push through the plan, they will do it. But feeling people, they have the tendency to be uh, procrastinating, procrastinators since they... The, they decide on their, based on their evaluations, based on, not on the logical, ano, but on their uh, own subjective uh, feelings about the thing. So, may mga disadvantages. So, the point is, do, dapat ma-learn mo lahat ng mga functions so that yung mga disadvantages na yun is ma-cancel nila yung each other. So, yun yung psychologically healthy personality, according kay yung, Which is uh, congruent with how Uh, with how analytical psychology works because sabi ng analytical psychology you have to merge all of your pers- uh, all of your uh, pers- things in personality collective unconscious unconscious complexes archetypes and of course functions and attitudes you have to merge them all no but it is hard <laughs> as mentioned by Jung it's uh, it takes a lifetime to do that the individuation but it's still consistent if you you will uh, you will think about it No, so that's how uh, that's how personality is. So personality types uh, is the conscious part of our personality. Ito yung nakikita ng labas. Ito yung nakikita ng tao. But this uh, this this uh, personality types are still influenced by the unconscious side, the personal unconscious, and the and most uh, important is the collective unconscious. So, depende sa magiging relationship daw natin sa, may, depende kung paano natin makikita or paano natin i-merge yung conscious natin sa unconscious natin, dun natin madedetermine if mamamerge ba natin or mamamaster ba natin lahat ng mga functions natin. Okay? So, that's why it's important also to look at the conscious and unconscious parts of our personality. Okay? which we will talk about next meeting. So next meeting, we will talk about the personal uh, personal, uh, personal, unconscious. And then next uh, meeting, so just, uh, Monday next week, would be the, per- the collective unconscious. Okay? So these are the types of uh, Jungian types, summary ng Jungian types. So yun nga, introverted thinking ako. So I'm a theoretical scientist now. Uh, uh, I double a bit in philosophy. <coughs> so I think it's good. It's uh, ano naman, accurate naman. Kayo ba? Ano kayo? <laughs> Saan kayo dyan? <laughs> uh, ano ba yung dominant uh, function sa attitude ninyo? So you can, you can actually see that.
Okay, so uh, may question. Sir, kay Carl yung po ba? Yes, kay Carl yung base ng MBTI. Uh, sinabi yun ni Myers and Briggs na yung theory ng INTP, INTJ is na binase nila sa theory ng personality types ni Carl yung. So yun, kaya medyo familiar kaya feeling ko sa iba, no? Can we really rely on that test po to say that a person, uh, hmm, uh, in terms of uh, valid, valid ang, ang tinatanong mo dyan is validity and reliability eh, ng test. Uh, research suggests that MBTI do not have uh, high reliable, mababa ang psychometric properties niya. <laughs> in short, hindi siya katiwatiwala, sabi ng mga researchers. No? But it's, uh, it's a pill is still there. Uh, so I don't know. But in my opinion, I think the fact na nakaka-relate yung tao or the fact na there's something that test is explaining is a testament or is a sign that that, uh, that test is still useful. Parang theory lang. No? Although it might not be reliable, it mean its validity is questionable, but it's still useful. Um, so I think there's still value there. But Again, in a scientific perspective, that that test is not that good. <laughs> but we will talk about that more when you will reach psychological assessment. <laughs> Kakaturo ko lang ng psychological assessment last last sem. So, uh, naging ex uh, may extensive discussion kami about MBTI. But that's that's a good question, nonetheless. Okay. So, yeah, you're welcome. Eh, sabi ko nga sa inyo, yan yung unang test ko nun eh. <laughs> Kaya medyo meron din akong konting uh, bias dyan. Okay. So, with that, uh, if you have any questions, just email me.